Out of all the video game franchises out there, the Sonic the Hedgehog series is one of the easiest to make fun of. It's mostly because not many franchises manage to still keep going as long as Sonic has, despite a massive drop off in quality, which has resulted in some odd Sonic games over the years. There were the Tails Only games, the horrible Game Gear games, and of course Sonic's attempts to make the jump to 3D. If we ignore Sonic 06, the biggest target for ridicule in the Sonic series has to be Sonic and the Black Knight. During the Wii's lifetime, Sega decided to start a storybook series for Sonic, which would see Sonic dropped into different tales with the first game being Sonic and the Secret Rings. It had decent sales, so they decided to make a sequel called Sonic and the Black Knight. It has to be said that this was one of the games Sega discontinued a few years ago to try and give back value to the Sonic brand. I had no interest in this game, but when Sega tried to pretend this game never existed, I suddenly wanted to try it out. So now that I managed to play through it for myself, how is it? Did Sonic's reputation at the time doom this game unfairly, or was Sega right to disown it? Let's see. I normally go through and break down the different aspects of a game when I review it, but for Sonic and the Black Knight, I think it'd be better if I go through it chronologically and describe my time with it. So, the game starts off with a CGI cutscene showing some girl being chased by evil looking knights. She then opens a portal in the sky which Sonic falls out of. This game takes place in the world of King Arthur, but apparently King Arthur has turned evil, so Sonic promises to stop him. This opening is alright. It looks decent enough, but for anyone going into this game thinking the premise is stupid with Sonic being in King Arthur and holding a sword, then this cutscene will probably just confirm the stupidity for them. The game then goes into a different style of cutscene, which is the main ones used to tell the story. I actually really like the way these cutscene look, as while the animation is basic, the style does set a good tone and looks nice. It was then time for the tutorial, which was only a minute long and didn't really explain much, but the controls were simple enough. Sonic pretty much controls by himself if you hold the control stick forward, and you can use your sword by flailing the Wiimote to slash enemies. After another cutscene, it was then time for the first proper level, although really it's just the tutorial level but extended. It was here when I realised that trying to obtain high speeds was pretty much pointless. Fighting enemies comes down to slashing with your sword and guarding against attacks, both are things that will slow you down, meaning whenever an enemy shows up, all sense of speed is pretty much lost. It also doesn't help that Sonic's acceleration is pitiful, and without a boost mechanic like in Sonic Unleashed, if you don't have the levels memorised, then the game will move at a snail's pace. At least for a Sonic game anyway. The level ended with the first boss fight against a dragon. I had no idea what you were meant to do, but I just stood next to his head, flailing the Wii remote, and it managed to take him down without any problems. Another cutscene then played introducing us to Sonic's companion for the game, a talking sword. Once again, if you thought Sonic using a sword at all was dumb, then the fact that it talks probably won't help. My problem with this is that why do they always have to give Sonic someone or something to talk to? It doesn't add anything apart from pointless banter between the two. It was then time for another boss fight, which had more to it than the dragon boss, but featured quick time events. It was also very short and pretty much played itself, so overall it was quite terrible. The game for the next half an hour then followed the pattern of cutscene, a short level, cutscene, a short level, cutscene, and of course, a short level. There wasn't anything wrong with the cutscenes, or anything that bad gameplay wise in the levels, but the pacing at the beginning of the game makes playing it a complete chore. A player can only sit through so many cutscenes for so long, as you buy a game to play it and have fun, not just watch it. There's nothing wrong with having levels only being about a minute long, but you can't have the time you're not playing be equal or outweigh the time you are playing. Super Mario Bros. 3 had short levels, but it wouldn't be the classic it is today if you had to sit through the characters talking after every level for about a minute. Oh, and the levels are called Missions, which is both out of place for the medieval setting and for Sonic games in general. After these missions, it was then time for the first character fight, which was against Shadow. In this world, most of the Sonic characters appear in it, but are taking the roles of the character from the time. It's a bit like when a sitcom does an episode set in a different time period, where everyone has the same personalities, but they're technically playing different people. This idea could have worked, but Sonic still has the same personality and memories of his normal self. It once again makes the concept look stupid, as Sonic thinks everything is weird, and I have to agree. 
If Sonic also played a role from the King Arthur story, then it would have helped me get sucked into the idea of this, but the fact that it's the same person, or hedgehog, means that you're always reminded that this game doesn't fit into the Sonic universe at all, and doesn't really make any sense. Anyway, the Shadow fight wasn't too bad. It wasn't fun, as there was very little skill involved in beating him, as all I had to do was flail until I won. After a pretty long cutscene in which it turns out Amy is all mystical and graceful in this world, the game then opens up a bit. A number of different missions opened up and you can beat them in whatever order you choose. Some of the missions also weren't a simple case of getting to the end of the level, instead I either had to beat a certain number of enemies or give rings to villages which are found throughout each level. There also wasn't a cutscene after every level and the levels become a much longer length. While this stopped the game from being boring, it then made the game annoying. This was the first time I was properly able to look at the gameplay, and this only made my time with the game worse. One of the main problems is that the game plays itself in a lot of ways. It doesn't literally play by itself, as if you want to pull back on the control stick and bring Sonic to a hole, you can, but you never have to turn around corners. If you hit a corner, the majority of the time the game will automatically take you round it. There are also very little platforming sections, so you don't even have the time jumps, and the homing tack is there, but you don't really use it that much. In an attempt to make the player have something to react to, there are obstacles in your way that you have to avoid. It feels so unnatural trying to avoid these, as there's no quick step, so you just have to slowly move Sonic to one side and hope for the best. Sonic and the Black Knight was made before Sonic Team figured out how to combine fast action with slower moments, and it definitely shows, as trying to move Sonic in any other direction than straight ahead feels very clunky. It was also during these levels I was able to try out the sword mechanics a bit more. The sword is very limited. You can slash upwards for a spin attack or swing your Wiimote side to side to slash horizontally. There isn't anything else to it which asks the question why make people use the Wiimote in the first place? I would guess the whole idea of this game came from because Sonic wanted to use the Wiimote in a Sonic game, but it feels so basic that it's mostly needless. I usually don't mind having to flare with the Wiimote, but while it doesn't feel out of place in this game, it could have easily been replaced with a button press, and the game would have been much better to play. Maybe if the combat was more dynamic than just flailing, it would have been more enjoyable. Despite the fact you have two different types of attack, it doesn't matter which one you use because of the way the enemies attack you. Half the time they're simply in your way, but if you can't stab your way through them quickly, then you have to fight them. To beat them, you either have to attack them quickly, or wait for them to attack, block it, and then slash them. The different attacks aren't used at all, and fighting enemies quickly becomes annoying, as they will attack you in groups, and thanks to the camera angle the game throws at you, it's hard to see if one is going to hit you or not. You also have a soul gauge, which once you fill it up, allows you to lock onto enemies and cut through them with ease. It does help you maintain momentum, which is good, but again, it's another way to make you feel like you're not actually playing the game, as all you have to do is press B and swing the Wiimote a couple of times. I finally reached the next boss fight, which this time was Knuckles, although technically it wasn't Knuckles. This fight played very similar to the Shadow fight, but was only a bit harder, as my flail technique no longer worked. After dying, I realised all I had to do was block his attacks and then counter. It was nice to have to think about what I was doing, but it still felt very bare bones, and still didn't approach anything enjoyable. It was then back to doing similar missions to what I was doing before, only in a couple new locations. The locations and graphics in the game are pretty good. My main problem with them though is that they don't fit the theme of Sonic in medieval times that well. The levels do fit the theme of a cartoony version of Camelot pretty well, but there wasn't much here that made it look or feel like a Sonic game. Admittedly, this is more of a nitpick, but I always liked the different personalities that the Sonic games had, and I felt it was lacking here. The missions were pretty much the same as before, only they were now a bit harder. This increase in difficulty made the levels go from being annoying to frustrating and joyless. There are no lives or game overs, so dying has little consequence, but thanks to the way the enemies attack you and the way the obstacles appear, every time you die it feels very cheap, which of course causes frustration. I then reached the next boss fight against Blaze, that I, at first I had trouble against, but then found out all I needed to use was to use the exact same tactic as Knuckles, block and counter attack. Beating her unlocked the boss fight against King Arthur and fighting him was horrible. 
At first I didn't mind it as it was a boss that you actually had to learn his patterns and attack against, but then it took a turn for the worse when I realised the only way to hurt him was by doing timed Wiimote flails. The trick is to swing when his sword glows red rather than when the game tells you to, but it's so imprecise that getting the timing right was too hard. After 20 minutes of rage I beat him and the credits rolled. Now this isn't the end of the game as I was only about two thirds way through, as when the credits finish there's another cutscene explaining that the girl at the beginning is the real villain and the King Arthur you just thought was a fake. It's a surprisingly good twist as I didn't see it coming and despite not making that much sense if she was the dark evil queen why did she summon Sonic to defeat a King Arthur she created, I did like the twist overall. Then something bizarre happened. I started enjoying the game. There are five more story missions after the twist and they were surprisingly fun to play. Each one has a time limit which you think would be irritating but it added a nice tension to reaching the goal. The levels moved at a faster pace and the environments were more creative and more fun to run through. You can also choose to play as Blaze, Shadow or Knuckles in these levels that control differently so you can use whichever one matches your playstyle best. There were still annoyances with the terrible combat and there were some horrible jumps to make but the focus became more about speed so it was easier to ignore the flaws. If only the whole game was like these last few levels I probably would have really enjoyed this game. After defeating some dragon which comes out of nowhere it was then time to face the true final boss. It was preceded by an overdramatic cutscene which I also really enjoyed. The boss fight itself wasn't too bad. Sure there were time Wiimote swings but you only had to do one at a time so it was fine. There was one more cutscene to wrap up the game and then the credits rolled for a second and final time. So that's Sonic and the Black Knight. My experience went from dull to annoying to frustrating to enjoyable but flawed. It makes rating the whole experience quite difficult but it was clear from playing it that there's too much wrong with the game for me to say it's good. While it has decent presentation, the gameplay falls flat in too many areas. The combat is shallow and doesn't work properly, the controls need to be a lot tighter, and I never felt like anything I had to do in the game required any skill. I can see why people might like it, as I'm sure if I replayed it I would have a better time with it, but you shouldn't have to beat a game multiple times for it to be fun. It also only took me 3 hours to beat, which was skipping most of the side missions, but still it's only a 5 hour game max. My score is 3.5 out of 10. If you like the idea and can switch your brain off then you can probably enjoy this game, but for anyone else Sonic and the Black Knight is way too rough around the edges to even be considered to be anything good.